Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. So before I start making this remote mechanical cable release, I look around the internet to see how other people have done it. So these are the few articles I found. Right, so the first one is quite a cool one. This is uh, supposedly made for the Leica M6 camera because you can see that the whole um, cable release unit is um, in this compartment that which fit nicely to the uh, base of the Leica camera. Right, so very nicely made. So the next one I found is this uh, remote that uh, this gentleman made for the Fuji X100 uh, camera. It's a digital camera, but it will make use of a mechanical cable release, huh? unlike the most of the current digital camera where you where it will use a digital signal. Okay, the last one I found is this wireless mechanical shutter release. I think the author made this um, cable release so that he can shoot photos of the rocket launches. So this is the circuit diagram of my design. The controller that I'm using this uh, ESP32. I chose this because it has a Bluetooth uh, built-in. Um, we are also going to use a small servo motor that will form part of the linear actuator. I will also write a mobile app to control the triggering of the uh, remote release. Uh, the mobile app will use Bluetooth to communicate to the remote cable release unit. Also, a big thank you to Mr. Andre Spice for his uh, configurable project case design and also Bolton uh, Printables for his servo linear actuator design. I will put the link to both pages in the video description. Right, so, this is the 3D printed box um, and very simple. So here you can see like four mounting holes, a power switch hole and of course another rectangular slot here. This is for the USB port of the ESP32 board, right? So uh, this is the snap on, so I can just snap this on. Alright, next we talk about the various uh, components in the electronics. So first of all, the ESP32 board, um, very simple, there's only three uh, cable to shoulder. One is the battery in, one is for the ground, and one for the signal to the servo motor. Right. So for the ground, we have to ground also the, the servo motor ground, the PCB board ground, and the battery ground together. So for the power in, it comes in from the battery to an on-off switch, and it will go to both the servo motor and also the uh, v in of the ESP32 board. Right? So this is why I have this connection here. So uh, next the servo motor itself. So this is the linear actuator bracket which I have 3D printed. So this is the uh, cheap mechanical cable release that I bought online. I think it cost me about uh, less than $3 each. Right? So it came with the black plastic support here which normally we just um, hold it against our two fingers and use the thumb to press down on the plug right? Right, so we don't need this black part so you can easily unscrew it and what we left with will be something like this right? so what we need to do is to insert the mechanical cable release through this hole right? there's a screw trap printed in this hole itself so we just need to right? Tighten it. If this is your first time uh, doing it, you may uh, need to use a bit of force. Right? So we have to put this in because if we put it in later, uh, it will be blocked by the servo motor and the battery itself. Right, so this is the first thing to put in. Next, I'll be ready to put all this together. Right? I think the next thing we should go in should be the servo motor bracket and also the battery okay so the servo motor bracket is um, secured to the box itself by two screw right i have a slot here so that you can 
adjust the breast position so that if enough so-called stroke movement to push the cable release right and then we have the uh, power switch right I will just position it loosely first before I secure it so the next thing ESP32 board there is the USB slot here so we need to align that to the slot on the box itself okay. you can see it here so I'm going to go ahead and tighten all this and I'll show you when it's ready 2000 years later So for coding the ESP32 board, I'm using Arduino uh, platform. So this is the code. I will not go through it. Um, but what I will probably do is to upload this code onto my GitHub so that um, it will become open source and uh, you guys, if interested, can download and uh, improve on it. Huh? So for programming the mobile app, um, I am using this MIT App Inventor. Uh, I myself is using an Android phone, so I'm just uh, making the app for that platform. I'm not so sure is it uh, possible to port this to the iOS uh, platform. Uh? Um, but otherwise, this uh, MIT app inventor is uh, quite easy to use. Good for people like me who are not really programmer. So I actually use a block key to do the programming. and. Uh, I could output this as a APK file and then install it on my uh, mobile phone, right? So again, uh, this will probably go onto the my GitHub, and then uh, you guys, if interested, can uh, download, try it, improve it, and share with us again, right? Alright, so um, if you are using the remote unit for the first time, you will need to pair your phone with the unit itself using the Bluetooth. So make sure your Bluetooth function is turned on. It depends on the phone, but uh, on my phone, I will go to settings, I will go to Bluetooth, make sure it's on. And, um, and what you see here is it will list uh, some of the Bluetooth devices that is nearby. Right, so and this is the one that is our for our remote uh, control unit APT remote again this name is uh, coded inside the ESP32 code nah? so just press on this and the system will try to pair it right so they ask you whether do you want to pair so I say pair right so that is done so if you go back to the um, Bluetooth screen setting screen you will see that the APT remote is already paired so now I'm going to demonstrate the use of the remote um, by attaching it to my 4x5 lens. This is the Fujinon 210 lens. So in case you're not sure about large format lenses, for large format lenses, the shutter is on the lens itself. So it's, uh, the shutter is here. right? And the unit is already on. As you can see, there's a red light here. So again, make sure on the app, the Bluetooth is on. And then I can start my app itself. So here we will press the scan button and look for our remote unit, APT remote. Right. So if it's connected successfully, you'll find that all the buttons are uh, active now. There are four modes of operation here. Uh, the first one is on, the second one is timer mode for 10 seconds. The third one is the manual mode where you can uh, uh, squeeze and release the uh, trigger manually and the third one is the thumb mode you can input a uh, timing let's say 20 seconds it will trip off the bug mode and then after 20 seconds it will re it will release it right so let's try the uh, most straightforward one the on the on is uh, simply a quick uh, press of the shutter right so for the Let's format lens, we will need to cock the shutter right by cocking here. Right. So um, there's this here LED um, light below the lens uh, so that when the aperture is open, you can see it clearly on, in the video. Right. So I'm going to press the um, on button. 
Right, so do you see the shutter is open? Um, the timing will be based on the shutter speed that you set on the lens. Huh? Okay, so the next uh, mode we're going to test is the timer mode 10 seconds. Right, so I caught the shutter. Okay, and then I'm going to press the button timer 10 seconds. Right, so there will be a countdown. At the end of 10 seconds, the shutter will strip. Right. So the next two will be the thumb, the bug mode. Right. So we need to set the lens to the bug mode. Right. By so you can see that now the lens is in uh, bug mode. Yep. So same thing for large format lens. I will need to cut the shutter. And then now we'll be ready to try the bug mode. Right. Okay. So the manual mark board, you will press the button once, right, and it will open the shutter, right, and you will need to press the manual mark mode again. In fact, what you see now, the only active button is the manual mark button. So you press it again, right, the shutter will close. Right, so it's up to you to control. As long as battery power, um, the um, server will be able the server motor will be able to hold the uh, shutter release right so the last one will be the thumb mode for the thumb mode i can enter something like you no know, uh let's say 15 seconds right and then we'll send the command to the um, remote unit so what it will do it will immediately trip the shutter okay i make sure I have to cock it first right um right it will open the shutter so at the end of the uh, 15 second, right, it will close, right. Right, okay. So these are the four modes of operation for now. Okay, so I set up my Afghanistan box camera. I have my Fujinon 210 uh, lens here. So I have set the shutter speed to one second. I think I'm indoor and today the sun is quite all right. So probably one second will do. And the cable release unit is already attached to the lens. Right, it's already powered on. Right. So later what I'll do, I will use the timer 10 second mode to take my own cell portrait right okay so this is what is inside the box camera so i have the um, developer and the fixer inside there and my paper is here so what i do now is to load the paper and then uh, take my cell portrait right you have probably seen me use this trick before if you have watched my other videos so how do we um, focus using a manual camera when we are taking a cell portrait right so i set up a light stand uh, with a stick attached to the magic gram and then um, the end of the stick will be where my eye is so i will use this uh, stick to uh, focus using my box camera and later i will just uh, move away the stick right? so i position my left eye to the end of the focusing stick so I, that is the point of focus and move it away and I'm also ready to uh, uh, press the timer 10 seconds on my app. Right, so here we go. Right, so there's a countdown display on the screen. So I will get ready for my exposure, right? So the exposure is done, so I can uh, go ahead and process the photo negative. all right so the developing and fixing has been done so now we can open up the box and then take a look at the result da, 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 da. okay so that's out from the fixer and now we can see the result i think yep not too bad so this is the exposure at one second um f5.6 right so let me wash this and dry this and i will show you the result in positive Yay! 
Hi guys, we have come to the end of this video. Please like it, share it, and finally do subscribe to my channel. And I see you at my next video. Take care. Bye.